LeBron, at this point in the season, do you feel like it's getting into a playoff-like atmosphere in terms of the intensity of these games? Uh, some games are, some of them aren't. Um, but we're not in we're not in playoff mode right now. You know, we just still we have a process to continue to you know get better every night, keep continue to work our habits, continue to get the guys that haven't been a part of the club uh, for a full year, get them acclimated to what we want to do. And we got guys coming back off an of injury that's still trying to get back into the flow and Kev and Jr. So, um, you know, some games are different than others. And uh, it's always good to have one of those playoff type atmospheres, but uh, every game is different. With Kevin Jr. back, Kyle out, how would you rate the chemistry of this team right now with so many ins and outs? Well, our, our chemistry is, is always good. Our camaraderie is always great. Um, we have a brotherhood around here that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, as far as us on the court, has been you know, off and on because we had so many guys that's been in and out and, um, you know, our coaching staff haven't had a great um, opportunity to know exactly, you know, our full group of guys to be able to implement onto the floor. So, you know, but I, I commend the guys that's been in the lineup and even with me being out a couple games, Kai being out a couple games, guys have continued to show up and play the way we want to play. How has JR continued to show he's an asset for this team? Yeah. Uh, JR is JR. We love him. <laughs> Your thoughts on, on Jokic and what he's been able to bring to this Nuggets team? He's, he's definitely made them a, a more impressive team, hasn't he? Uh, he's a good player. Very, very good. There's, been, there's been a lot of talk on, you know, the whole some players not being able to play. Obviously, it's a long, long season. It's asking. Can you kind of explain how much it's asking to have a player be on the floor for every every game during the season? The grind you guys have. That's not asking too much. Um, you're going to have people that have their opinions about one guys on the floor every night, and you're going to have opinions about guys, you know, taking care of their body as well. Um, you know, it's, it's never a discussion um, when a team decides to shut their players down because they feel like they can't make the playoffs. You understand the fans' perspective. I mean, they're here to see you in the building. They're here to see, you I'm know. playing tonight. You playing? <laughs> Nobody wants to see me play. Uh, all right. I'm playing tonight. <laughs> Are you looking forward to that discussion later on, me after the season? You know, the, the pros and cons of playing and resting with with the players and with the league. Is no. that a conversation needs to be had. No. LeBron, what makes Nikola Jokic such a good player? Um, his passing ability. I like that most about him. Anything else? Yeah. Um, how much um, do you get involved with reading the quarterly reports for Nike? Uh, does that information come to you? Does Maverick? Does he... I know what's going on. Do you? I don't. I mean, I'm not an investor. It's hard. It's hard. You know, hard for me to understand some of it. But do you have any concerns with these reports and you know the dip in the stock today? Um. Uh. Listen. At the end of the day, of Nike hits the fan, then we're all in trouble. <laughs> Everybody. Have you, have you been heartened by, by the response of the of NBA players since you started speaking out, really leading the, the way on non-basketball matters or during the campaign? A lot of guys have stepped up and said, this is, you know, I have my responsibility. Has that made you feel like kind of heartened by that? that I don't know. No, listen, at the end of the day, what I do, I do it for, for me. For what I believe in, you know, I don't, I don't do it to get other people behind me or, you know, give them more courage. If that happens, then, you know, so be it. But, you know, I speak from a well-educated mind when I speak upon anything, and I come from a, a lot of knowledge. So, um, and I'm just happy that you know athletes in today's world have an opportunity to speak up on things that they feel either passionate about or they feel like they should speak up on it. But you got some athletes that don't want to speak upon it as well, and that's okay. It's, so you don't see it as any kind of responsibility that you've been given this platform, and if they feel strongly about there must be guys who in a locker room feel very strongly about something, but then they don't want to use their public platform. But that's so your only responsibility as a professional athlete is to show up to work every day and bust your tail, to get better every day. You have no responsibility to speak about things that you're not comfortable with. We don't, we don't get paid to speak about things that you're not comfortable with. For me... If I'm knowledgeable about it and I feel a passion for it, I'm gonna speak upon it. But that's because who I am. Yeah. But when you get drafted, they don't they don't draft you to the ball club and say, okay, we want you to speak upon something that's going on off the floor. They will release you or cut you if you're not playing the game the right way. Yeah, I was talking to Steve Kerr about this the other day, and he was he was saying 
he would never speak out. He felt like it wasn't his place. And then with him, it was a Muslim band. He said, something happened that I felt this went too far. I have to talk. Is that he, what he was saying that as a player, he would never speak upon it, or as a coach? He, both. He just said, that he, I didn't see it as my situation, my responsibility. I kept to myself. Well, I think times have changed. I mean, you look at the 80s and the 90s in sports, there was really only a couple people talking. It was really the star player talking. It was the head coach. It was probably the, the second guy on the team talking, and that's all you got sound bites from. And sound bites couldn't travel fast like they can now because of social media. So you probably, even if the guy on the bench that came to sixth man of the year came off the bench and was talking, you probably would never see it because it didn't travel. And by the time it got to you from the East Coast to the West Coast, it would be so fabricated that you didn't know to believe it or not. So social media has given us an opportunity to be able to speak upon things and be able to get to, I mean, all places all over the world. And, you know, times have changed. Athletes feel like, you know, it's more than just sports, you know, and uh, we got so much, uh, we got so much power in our voice and so many kids and so many people look up to us that, you know, if we can be an inspiration to somebody that can change somebody's life or can shed light on something that's unjust, um, speak upon it if you feel comfortable. If not, don't speak upon it. Out comes LeBron, blows past Bledsoe, goes all the way to Emerson. Oh, off the corner, he's open, three on the way. He knocks it down. Cousins in on Thompson, down the left alley. Oh, Thompson blocks the shot. What a rejection by Tristan Thompson. Out comes Irving in a hurry to the foul line, right around him, right as he lays it up and in.